Warning, I am not a doctor. I do not have a medical degree. Okay, so now that we've gotten that under control and out of the way, we're gonna talk about acute chest syndrome. This is a really complicated topic, so I'm gonna to try to make it simple for all of us to understand, but also try to explain the technical aspects to everybody. After pain, acute chest syndrome, also called ACS, is the most common complication in sickle cell after pain. So um, acute chest, has to do with your breathing, and it's kind of like tuberculosis in six hours. So the thing with acute chest syndrome is um, a lot of times your oxygen will drop really quickly, um, you'll have trouble breathing, you might have a cough or a fever associated with it, and if you don't receive treatment quickly, it can be fatal. In fact, it um, accounts for about 25% of the fatalities of people living with sickle cell. and um, there's not a whole lot that we can do uh, around acute chest syndrome um, besides going to the hospital to uh, get it managed. So the things that are associated with acute chest syndrome, because there's a lot of different things that can cause it and what it actually looks like. So it's the sickling within your lungs and uh, it's painful and it makes it really difficult for you to breathe and uh, it can intensify really quickly without treatment. So one of the things, there's a bunch of different things that will happen, and we've actually experienced acute chest about four times this year, and so I'll talk about our personal experience as well. So the number one thing, obviously, would be um, oxygen. If you're below uh, 92 at a higher altitude or 90 at a lower altitude, uh, you will be placed on oxygen. Um, also, doing something called an incentive spirometer, which um, if you've, if they're kind of hard to explain, but it's a t it's a breathing a little plastic breathing tube, and you and instead of trying to blow out, you're actually blowing in at a regulated amount of breath. So instead of going and just filling it up and decreasing really quickly, what they want you to do is to get a steady rate of oxygen coming in. So they will have you do these incentive spirometers where you breathe in at a regular rate like this. So that allows your entire lungs to get filled up, not just the half of them, but the entire lungs to get filled up and to exhale all of that carbon dioxide. So one of the things um, that frequently causes uh, acute chest or ACS is when you're already in the hospital for a pain episode. So one of the things that they put you on if you've been admitted are some pretty heavy duty narcotics. Morphine or Dilaudid fall under that, Nubane, and they have a nasty side effect of sedating you to a point where it's you're not taking very deep breaths. So the less uh, deep breathing you do, the longer those sickle cells inside, or uh, the sickle hemoglobin inside each of those red blood cells has a chance to um, not become reoxygenated because you're not breathing in deep. So you got all those cells down in the bottom half of your lungs that are um, don't have any oxygen. And remember, we talked about when they don't have any oxygen in their hands, they like to grab onto each other. So you're increasing the sickling that's happening in your chest by having that really low respiration rate because uh, you're not providing those red blood cells with uh, more oxygen to get started and move on. The other thing that happens in acute chest are that blood vessels that actually leave your lungs um, can be uh, constricted, making it harder for the red blood cells to actually leave and head back out. So um, that causes some complications in clots in your lungs and um, can make it even harder to get over that hump. So people with acute chest syndrome um, are often in a lot of pain, require a lot of oxygen because their oxygen is going down because things are getting stuck in their lungs. And um, if enough if that happens, if enough red blood cells get trapped in there, you can have clots and you can also require a blood transfusion to get some more healthy red blood cells in there and uh, get everything flowing back again. So acute chest syndrome, that's kind of what happens in a nutshell. And because um, you have that sickling on top of what kind of looks like bronchitis, things can take a turn for the worse very quickly. So any kind of 
chest pain or breathing problems in sickle cell should be looked at really quickly. The other nasty side effect of having acute chest syndrome is once you've had that first episode, you're at a much higher rate to have it again. In addition, these um, episodes tend to cause permanent damage, leading to people having um, an ongoing diagnosis of asthma uh, for the rest of their lives. Also, if you have acute chest as a young child, you have a much higher rate of having it um, as an adult. And if you have certain types of uh, sickle cell, remember we talked about uh, there was SS, uh, S beta zero, those two have a much higher rate of having acute chest um, compared to S beta plus and SC. Although anybody can get it and has gotten it, there are certain types of sickle cell disease that have a higher incidence of this complication. So acute chest syndrome, think of it like pneumonia, but it comes on quick. It's coupled with sickle cells in your chest and can be fatal if not taken care of quickly and effectively. Check us out on the web at hopeforscd.org and post any comments or questions below. I know this is a really complicated and hot topic, so we'd love to hear from you. Thanks.